take a tactical approach to your planning application. Go for things that are going to go through easily. If you're trying to get something that's a little bit more controversial, perhaps get the bulk of the scheme approved first and then go back and add the more controversial aspects later on as perhaps a minor amendment or a second application. It's really important when you look at planning history that you try and establish what's gone on in the immediate area because that's usually quite a good barometer of what planning authorities have previously allowed. With planning, never lose sight of the big picture. You're never going to get everything you want. You're going to have to learn to compromise. If you have to compromise, you'll probably get what you want in another way later on. Love thy neighbour. Go round and have a cup of tea. Talk through your plans with your neighbour. They'll find it a lot harder to object to your planning once they've broken the ice. Be aware that each local planning authority has a checklist of what you need to submit with your application. Each one will differ. Make sure you've checked your list so that when you put your application in, it's all on the council's website, it adheres to that list because without that being correct, they won't register your planning application. A lot of local authorities are looking at reducing CO2 emissions from new builds. It'll help your application if you provide clear and accurate figures how your build has reduced CO2 emissions compared to a standard case. When renovating or extending, it can be tempting to take a chance with planning permission or the building regulations. It is a big mistake. If things go wrong, you could find you have to undo it or at worst, pull it down. So never try to cut corners. It's always a false economy. If you've got a listed building, you may not only need planning permission, you may also need listed building consent, and you need to remember that that applies to the inside and outside of the building and anything you do that affects the character of the building. Lots of people dream of building an open countryside, but in reality, it's very, very difficult. We reckon there's only three ways of doing it. You either convert an existing building, you knock down one and rebuild it, or you become a farmer. At the moment, there's a, an agenda for localism and community involvement back at the grassroots. So what local people think is key. If you've got a marginal project and you want to get it through the planning process, if you've got community support, that just might make the difference and get you planning permission.